Let's look at the entity framework and doing CRUD operations. CRUD is not something you say when you get frustrated. Instead, CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. These are the four fundamental operations we perform on data. We want to create a new record or we want to read all the records. Maybe we need to update a record or two and maybe we should delete some records if necessary. We've already seen Create and Read in previous videos, but I'll do it again. Let's make a new video. Video. Vin gets new video. And for a title, we'll say Entity Framework CRUD Operations. And for the description, we'll say Learn the Meaning of CRUD. Maybe that's something you want to teach your kids someday. So now we have this video out here that we created. We said make a new video. And so vid references a video object out on the heap. That's something I've talked about in several videos. Go look at my reference types versus value types and heap and stack if necessary. But essentially vid is a reference to this video. And it is ours. It has the title, you know, entity, framework, crud operations then it has a description learn the meaning of cred that's what that means in there that i just scribbled And this context out here has no idea we've created this video if i say me context dot save changes that has no meaning to the context because we haven't made any changes at all but as we did in previous videos i'm going to say me context dot videos dot add vid and once i've done that now the context will trace this object as well. So anything we do to this object, me context will see and tell the database to update appropriately, regardless of whether that update is an actual update, delete, or read, or create. In this case, we've added it as we've done in previous videos. So now all I have to say is me context dot save changes. Oh, I already had <laughs> save changes here. Control L, save changes, and me context will say, hey, insert a video into the underlying table as we've seen before in previous videos but I just want to show that again here's SQL Server Profiler that I showed in previous videos let's start up a trace and say hey follow everything that happens on my database and tell me about it looks like we have some existing connections here application name microserver soft server SQL management studio and Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio query both of those are coming from SQL Server Management Studio that I have running on the background there's one connection here there's another connection here for our queries you can see when I hit F5 our table is empty our table does exist inside of the my test DB uh, database here's the videos table but there's nothing in it so far let's do the insert oh did you see that actually in the profiler when I hit F5 and said hey execute that query that he typed and I guess that's not the query that I typed I'm not sure what it's doing here it's it's probably just updating updating what's going on in here SQL Server Management Studio uh, does SQL for you to, to maintain this nice whoops this nice GUI layout anyway I digress let's go here let's add a video F10 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 videos dot add you can see that the entity framework thought there for a moment it took a minute to verify that hey the database is actually there. In fact, if we look at the profile, you can see there were some updates. It's looking at the migration history. We'll look at migrations in a later video. I actually want to say, man, I'm getting confused with all those windows open. I want to save changes on that record. Hit F10. You can see that scroll down a little bit further. We get this insert into videos, a title and description, values. Look at this. The entity framework is using parameters. If you know about SQL Server and or SQL injection attacks and those kind of things, you know that parameters are good. If you don't know about those kind of things, go Google them or look at my SQL playlist. Either way, parameters are good. We like to parameterize our values. The value of the parameter at zero. At zero is an nvarchar max, essentially a string. The value of at zero is an entity framework cred operations. The exact same value we put right here, entity framework crud operations the next parameter at one at one is learn the meaning of crud and so those two values are what we are inserting into the title column and the description column and SQL Server is responsible for generating the ID for our object if I go back now 
to SQL Server Management Studio. Hit F5. You can see we get Entity Framework, CRUD Operations, Learn the Meaning of CRUD, and ID of 2 because the ID of 1 was consumed by the previous record I had in this playlist uh, where we had an ID of 1. These IDs just keep counting on and up and up and up. And if you delete values, uh, those IDs are still consumed. So that's an insert. I also showed you a... Oh, look, I just totally messed that up. I showed you a, a select. Actually, an insert, that's a create. It is an insert, but that's creating my data. And now I want to read the data. I showed that to you in a previous video, but why not? Let's do it again. I'll say, let's go down here. Video vid gets me context dot videos dot single and the only reason I can call single is because there is a single record in the table if there's more than one record then single would actually throw an exception and as I did in previous videos I can say vid dot title control L control VV vid dot description control F5 build that run that you can see that our data that's in the database is written to the console Go back to the profiler. Whoa, scroll down, lots of stuff here. But you can see that the read there performed a select. A select is how you do a read in SQL. Give me the top two records from the videos table. I want these columns here. I need the ID, I need the title, I need the description. That's all the columns. If we were asking for less columns than we're actually in the table, we'd only get the data that we're asking for, which is nice. We don't waste time bringing in all the data, but generally, the columns in your table match directly up with what you have in your code here. What we have in our code is ID, title, and description. The select top two is actually kind of interesting because I asked for the single record. I didn't ask for two records. I asked for one record. But the reason why the Entity Framework is asking for top two is if the Entity Framework gets two records back, then it knows that the single call, where I said single down here, it says, hey, there's, there's two records. That might mean there's 20. There might be... 30. I don't care if there's two records, then I know I need to throw an exception and blow up and say, hey, I can't give you the single item because, because there's more than one item. That's why the Entity Framework turns around and says, well, give me the top two instead of just the top one. Going back to our code here, we just saw a read. We've seen a create. Let's do an update. Update's pretty simple. I can say vid.title gets, let's see, what is our title? I don't even remember. Entity Framework CRUD Operations. Let's just say uh, beginning crud. <laughs> so I've just updated the title of the object that we have. When we grab an object from the Entity Framework, it's just the same as we did before with the add. When I said me context.videos dot add and I had that video that I passed in here. The Entity Framework tracks this object, the reference to this object. The Entity Framework tracks that object. This is the same as uh, we did it did before when we added the record and so when we update the title the entity framework will detect that and if I want to send those changes down to the database I have to say hey me context please save changes on all the objects that I've changed data on and so the entity framework will be like hey you changed the title let's update the title so F10 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 ish F10 F10 Go to SQL Server, you can see that the title is Entity Framework CRUD Operations. If I F5, you'll see Beginning CRUD. Let's go to the profile, scroll down even further, all the way down. And right here, you can see this Execute SQL. This is a stored procedure. I'm going to learn about stored procedures in my SQL programming playlist. Uh, you can see the update here. Update videos. Set the title to the parameter at zero. That parameter at zero is Beginning CRUD where the ID is equal to at one, at one values being ID of two. So we're setting the only video in our playlist, which has an ID of two, we're setting its title to beginning crud. So that is an update operation. The last operation I wanna show you is a delete. Let's, uh, we can get rid of all this right here. I can say, hey me context dot videos dot remove vid basically says vaporize that record I'm no longer interested in that record if I don't say save changes then the changes will not propagate down to the database F10 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 I could have hit it control F5 I guess but I think it's more interesting to keep hitting F10 and step through this and show it to you scroll down the very last instruction here execute SQL delete delete 
from videos where the ID is equal to at zero, the ID being two, that exact same record we've dealt with throughout this entire video. Open up SQL Server, hit a five. There's nothing in the videos playlist because we have nuked that record. So that is Entity Framework and a basic CRUD operation.